Well, we're going this way, you know, but I argue with me.
to the ship.
San Diego Chargers. It was also Fan Appreciation Day at Tampa Stadium. Everybody attending got a free hat. Okay. Bucks giving away trips to the Pro Bowl and the Super Bowl. They did everything except honor Tampa Bay Bandit season tickets. Why not? Ray Ferguson. Now, Foot-O is a replacement team. Now, the winless Lions were in Green Bay. No regular players in this game as well. The longest rivalry in the National Football League. Nearly 36,000 at Lambeau. It's like a three-decade wait to get tickets. And there's the replacement photo. Save with their souvenirs. Alan Risher sacked some six times today. The Packers could not pick up the blitz. They created field goals. We tied at six and six fourth quarter. Risher to John Summers in the pack late in the game, leading at 13 to 16. Fourth down, the Lions perhaps their last chance. Todd Hans to Daryl Bryant touchdown. And we're tied at 13 apiece. Six minutes to go in the game. Detroit had a field goal. And then Max Zendejas at the gun from 45 yards away for the Packers. We go to overtime where the Packers are no stranger to that unknown territory. Four minutes in the OT. Detroit kicker Mike Trindle missed the 42-yarder moments before, but he the next from 31 yards away. This comes after two consecutive penalties against Packers to bend back. Chuck Washington checked the waiver wire Monday morning. The final 19 to 16, the Lions with their first victory of the year. So they. <laughs> Help! Help! Is anybody there? Help! This is this is John Reeves. John Reeves, archaeologist. Is anybody there? Can anybody help me? No! No!
can anybody at all tell me why the Greeks decided to destroy the statue of Mount Azuma instead of keeping it for its beauty? Anybody? Hey, Jim, wake up. You're in class, bud. We... Okay, um, when you're done uh, finishing with your folders, put them up here on my desk, and I'll have them graded in a couple days, okay? At the end of the weekend. <coughs> Uh, Mr. Kelly, please report to the principal's office. Okay. Mr. Kelly. I'll be right back. Um, just put your folders up here, and uh, I'll get them back to you by Monday. Mr. Reeves, we'll see you right away, Mr. Kelly. Thanks, Angela. I'll show myself in. Good afternoon, Mr. Reeves. Good afternoon, Mr. Kelly. Have a seat. Thank you, sir. Um, well, I hate to get straight to the point, but was there any particular reason why you called me here? Yes, but it's a rather personal thing. Well, go ahead, sir, please. You see, two days ago, my brother, John Reeves, was reported missing on an expedition in the Mozambique in Africa. Yes, sir. Well, I guess what I'm trying to say is, I understand that you are a man of extreme adventure, and many times you have been to that area of the country and uh you really know the surroundings yes sir. now you've been working here for about 10 years and every year around this time you decide to take a trip there well my offer to you is i will pay for and establish a place for you to stay in africa if you would show me or tell me the whereabouts of, of my brother i have a map that he gave me before he left and i could give it to you and maybe you could explore where he was well, sir, I'm honored that you'd come to me with your proposal. But it really has been many years since I've been to Africa. And my last experience there was not exactly a memorable one. But nevertheless, I will consider your offer and get back to you as soon as possible. Very well, Mr. Cully. Goodbye, sir. Boy, imagine that. Mr. Reeves actually coming to me for help. I guess I better give him a call. Hello, Mr. Reeves. Um, I've considered your offer and decided uh, I think I'd like to go. Oh, good, Mr. Kenny. But I really can't talk right now, so please report to my office early tomorrow morning and we'll discuss the details. Oh, very well, sir. Um, thank you very much. Good night. Good morning, Mr. Reeves. How are you this morning? Good morning. Yes, good morning, Mr. Kelly. Well, let's get right to it. Yes, sir. I have already arranged for tomorrow morning a plane ride to Mozambique for you. Yes, One sir. passenger. Yes, sir. There, the pilot will give you the map that I was talking about last night. He will fly you directly to Mozambique and drop you off at Prince Alvar's castle, a personal friend of mine. I'm sure he'll give you the best accommodations possible. Yes, sir. I wish you the best of luck, Mr. Kelly, and I'll see you when you return. Thank you, sir. And goodbye. Uh... See what else will I need? Sunglasses. Ooh. Oh. Boy. Boy, this whip. I tell you what, it's been around. And...
I'm fine. Oh, you're in the middle late, aren't you? Well, I have some business I need to take care of. Well, we should be taking off very shortly. We expect that the flying time will be approximately, oh, uh, 20 hours. Okay. Oh, I left the map on your seat. You'll see it. Okay, thank you very much. Captain speaking. We should be landing uh, very shortly, so please fasten your seatbelts. Uh, thanks again. You know, it's been a real pleasure flying with you. I can't wait to, you know. Oh, Mr. Kelly, here's a message for you. Oh, thank you. Call Prince Alvar. Well, thanks again. Yeah, thanks for letting me use your phone. Well, this is, um, Mr. Kelly. Uh, yeah. Why Do you want me to get started right now? It's dark outside of you. Hello? 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 Oh, great. I better get that map. Luckily, I'm pretty close to where I need to be. Shoot. Yeah, thanks again. Ah, great. Better start walking. <sighs> oh, God, I've been looking for hours and I haven't found anything. The map says I should be right there. <sighs> hey, what's this? Oh, it looks like part of a radio. Maybe it was John's. It must be getting close. What is that? A cave? Uh, yeah, it's a cave of some sort. Uh, I better go in. John Reeves. 
Well, I found him torn in half as, oh, gross, his inside's coming out. Oh, what's that? It comes from the other door. My God, some sort of worshiping room. Who is that? Hey, hey. Well, even though I didn't, wasn't able to find his brother alive, at least these gold stacks will be saved in a very valuable place in America. I only hope I can find my way out of this place. This movie has been produced in cooperation with Ryan Edward Kelly Productions. Thank you for watching. Launching in T minus five seconds. Four, three, two, one. Launch is successful. How'd it go? The launch is a success, sir. The island of Kualidompe should be destroyed in a matter of minutes. Continue our tour. If you look to your right, you might see one of the giant white walls of Kuajumpa Island. This is one of the only things left standing after the hydrogen bomb was dropped two years ago. So it, you know, really means a lot to our people. <laughs>
a giant spider. Oh, hold on, I have another call. Hello, hey guy. A giant horse? Okay. Hey Tiger, I'm deciding I've decided to call a national state of emergency. Yes, war in Japan. Okay. April, get my seat ready. Today is regular regularly scheduled program to bring you this special Prime Minister address. And now the Prime Minister. Good evening, friends. I feel bad that this is not a test. We have declared a national uh, unrest among us for reasons fairly unknown, but we have received several reports of giant animals and insects that have plagued their land for the last couple hours. Now, we have already gotten our Air Force and our uh, Marines out, and they are patrolling the areas <laughs> around our island. Uh, luckily, most of the monsters seem to be moving westward toward Japan. There, they have already called national unrest, and they are waiting on the shores, on their, their uh, eastern shores, um, for the monsters, and there they will be destroyed. At the moment, all I can say is to stay inside, don't go outside, keep your doors locked, and uh, if you're on the eastern side of the island, I think that your danger has mainly passed. On the western end, I don't know what you have coming, so please stay tuned for uh, further information on the story. Thank you. This is Marine Ship number seven reporting in uh, we have not found any... T Whoa, wait a minute. There's something up ahead. We're going to check it out. Okay, we're moving in. Haven't seen much of anything yet. Wait a minute. There is something moving. We're getting close enough. Oh, my God! Oh, my God! Ah! letter four. No. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, put it on four, four, right, four. Captain, there's a message for you. Very well, put it on the viewer. Uh, Captain, this is um, James Stark from the Japanese fleet. I do believe 200 yards away we've spotted uh, a guard ship from the Katadupa Island. Uh, I guess he's drifted astray or something. Would you like us to go investigate it? Yes, go ahead, we'll keep you on the viewer. Very well, sir. Pull ahead, 200 yards. Okay, sir, we're coming up on the ship. <sighs> Almost there, we'll give you visual. Okay, here's visual. Oh my God! Oh no! Captain, it's, it's a massacre. I've never seen anything like it. Blood all over the place. If this is a two-member ship, there's only one person here. Sir, there's picking, we're picking up something on the uh, visual air scan. I don't know. Maybe it's the same thing that, that did this. Let's get out of here. Full throttle. Let's get out. Full throttle. Stark, get out of there. Get out of there. It's gaining on you. What is it? I don't know. It's some sort of giant moth. It's gaining on us. Move it, Captain. Move it. <laughs> Commander, no. It's already here. Look out. Shh. <laughs> Can't breathe. <coughs> Captain, it's got you now. Turn off the visual. God, there's just no stopping these things. I don't know what to do next. Hello. Captain, this is Jim Drake, one of the top scientists in my field. Uh, I do believe I have some information for you. I think I found uh, a way to reverse the process of um, how the uh, the things got enlarged. I do believe that it was caused by the H bomb two years ago. Yes. 
and I think I found a way to reverse it. Uh, I can ship you a batch. It's a liquid form. I can ship you a batch if you want. Oh, it won't be in time? Oh, shoot. Okay, well, if the batch won't be able to get there in time for the first line of defense, then I put it in the second line. Yeah, and who knows, maybe your first line of defense will, will stop the monsters and we won't have to use it. It's not an assured thing, but I think it'll work. Okay, I'll ship it right away. Good evening. Yes, sir. No, we haven't been able to see anything. No, sir. Oh, I'll take one more look. This shore looks... Wait a minute, sir. There is something. Hold on, let me get a closer look at it. Yes, sir, I see them. Hurry, launch the air attack. Commence launching procedure. <laughs> Commander, this is ship one with an aerial view. They've just gotten up on the shore, sir. There seems to be five of them. Wait a minute, sir. Wait. Whoa, what the? What? Oh, no! Crap! Oh, sir! This is ship number two flying side by side with ship number three. Number one has been destroyed. Ship number three coming up on left side. Going down for strafing run. No effect, sir. Wait a minute. He has ship number three. Number three. Look out. The moth. The moth. Ship number three down. It's coming for me. Ah! Commander, the monsters are now moving forward toward our first line of defense. Commander, they have taken position directly in front of us. Very well. Commence firing. Load them up. <laughs> Commence firing. <laughs> the missile is streaking toward him, sir. Sir, we have all the stuff loaded in, all the chemicals. Okay, commence firing. <laughs> Whatever it is, it's powerful stuff, sir. Can't see anything, sir. Wait, the smoke's clearing, sir. It worked! They shrunk! They shrunk back to size, sir! It worked! Dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun!
sidewalk has us have all of a sudden had a big uprising. The evil Dr. Lex death has been terrorizing the small and peaceful town. But there is a solution. Dun, 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 dun. Super stupid and his sidekick Otto, posing as ace reporter and photographer, have come to save this town. Dun, 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 dun. Downtown at the Beachwalk Times. Chief, Chief, Lex, Lex Death just started a killing spree downtown. Okay, send Scoop Jones and uh, Johnny B. Good on the scene now. Yes, go, sir. go! <laughs> Taking 
call to see what you think about this very controversial song. Caller number one, what do you have to say about it? Well, it was okay, just not my type of song. Lionel Richie, maybe I'm... Um, okay, you thank know, you very wait, much. Not... Caller number two. I didn't like it, you know, man. I like 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 that Run DMC stuff, not this white boy stuff. I can't say what I think about it over the radio. Goodbye. Thank you. Yeah, I call her number three. What did you have to think about her? <laughs> I just killed your son, and the rest of your family is next. <laughs> oh my God. Take over for me. I gotta you got go. It. Take this over. Quick, hurry up. Eddie! Oh my God, how could they have done this to you? Eddie! Oh my God, Sarah. This has gone too far. found your son. Who is this? And your daughter. Who is this? Now I'm coming for you! Hello? Hello? Is this the police? Yes, it is. Uh, could you give me the last number dialed to 597-2024? I'll have to connect you with the Hurry, police. department. This is very important. Hello? Hello, this is, uh, uh, Jam and Jerry, uh, Wolf, you know, from the radio station. I'd like the last number dialed at 597-2024. Just a moment. Mr. Jam and Jerry? Yes. The last number called was 597-2024. Yeah, that's my number. What's the number that was dialed here the last time? That's the number. Oh. 597-2024. Is there something wrong, Jam and Jerry? Hello? 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 Oh. Bobby, my God, I killed my only son left. Now I've got Ben. Now I've gotten you to kill one. <laughs> oh. Drop it, Ben. Why? Remember Ray Jabowski? Yeah, he died in now. No, he didn't. I'm Ray. Ever since you left me there, I plotted my revenge. And now I've got it. Now it's time for mine. Not quite. The gun is in. Goodbye, Jerry. Oh my god! 
American government has thwarted us once too often. Now we must retaliate using force. We will board a small plane in Turkey. If we give our lives, if we have to give our lives, we will. Understand? I can't wait any longer. He's going to spoil the whole thing. Go ahead. roughly 20 minutes and please extinguish all smoking materials. Hang that up there. Sure. should decompress, they'll drop down over your head. Please place them over your face with the strap behind your head. If you have a child, put his on first. Um, please fasten your seatbelts. We'll be taken off shortly. Have a nice flight. Thank you. Oh, hand me that mic there, Thomas. We're at a cruising altitude. This is your captain speaking. We've reached our cruising altitude and our steward will be coming around serving you your food. The choice is beef stroganoff or ham. Would you care for a drink? Sounds Um, would you care for a drink? I'll have a, um, white wine. Okay. Here you go. Would you care for a drink? I'll take the same thing. Okay. Sir, would you like a white one too? It's very good. I'll bring you one. Thank you. Here. I think. <laughs> the best American type No! <laughs>
Are we clear for landing? Yes. This is 747. All right. <coughs> Please, everybody, take your seats. We're going to land. Oh, my gosh. You're going to have to sit down. my co-pilot and he's gonna kill another passenger in the 10 minutes. Hurry up! Yeah. He just killed another passenger. He just killed another passenger. And the passenger that's left has to throw all the dead bodies out on the tarmac. Tell them to hurry up with the fuel! Hurry up with those fuel people! We need it now! Oh my god! Oh no! Hey Mike, we almost ready to go? Yeah, you, just a minute here. Oh, a minute. How's my hair? All right. All right, we're ready to roll. And five, four, three, two, one. And in other news, here just ten minutes ago, three hostages were flung from their 727 jet on their way to Hawaii. A hostage took has taken them over and is believed to still have three more hostages on the plane. More news after this. Thank you. Oh, say you okay? Yeah, I'm just real tired. Me too. We should be able to do something. There's two of us, there's one of him. We had a chance when there was five, we didn't do anything. Well, now we should act. I think you're right. But he's got those guns and the grenades. Don't worry, what? don't worry about this. Yeah, don't worry I about it. I can them. handle it. Oh, what are you gonna do about it? Don't worry, shh, here it comes. No talking on the plane! Either of you. Can now. I bring the captain some food? Yes, it's closed. Wait, could, could you bring me some? You will have nothing to eat. I brought you some food, captain. Good, I'm hungry. Thank you. We have a plan to overrun him. Well, if I can help in any way, you just let me know. Well, I don't know what you can do, but right now he's asleep, and I think that's when we're going to take him. That's the, This is the time. Okay. What, what do you want me to do? Nothing. Just keep flying the plane. All right. He's asleep? Yeah. Wait, look what I got. Shots. We killed him. He's dead. We shot him in the face. Oh, that's great. This is flight 747. We're coming in for a landing. Good afternoon. I'm Ed Kelly. Today we'll be discussing the hostage situation. A special talk with Reverend Billy Jackson and we'll have Dr. Are You Lean In to talk about the recent uprising in the med scandal. Today on New Scope. New Scope with Ed Kelly. New Sports with Mike Finnebed. And Weather with Steve Weller. And topping our news broadcast today is the hostage situation. What was thought to be a day of fun and excitement turned out to be a day of dread and sorrow for the campers of Boy Scout Pack 401. It all started when the Boy Scouts were camping at Kaufman Lake. For the rest of the story, let's go live to Wynn Smiley on the scene. Just 20 minutes ago, here at Kaufman Lake, a woman, a woman opened fire on Boy Scout Pack 401. No one knows why, 
I... She started to shoot again. Back to you, Ed. Well, thank you, Ed. Uh, we'll be updating that story in the 11 o'clock news later on tonight. In Granite City, the state is thinking about building a large-scale prison. There are many different feelings about this new plan. And let's go to our man on the street, Sam Elliott, and find out their reaction. Sam? Excuse me, sir. We're doing a survey. Um, what do you think about building, building the uh, prison in this area? Hey, am I on TV? Yes, sir, please. Hey, am I? Um, please answer the question, sir. Can what you do you beat it? What do you think about them building the prison here? Prison? What prison? They're thinking of building a prison, sir, here in your town. Really? That's great. They figured in when my, when my wife, you know, she don't have far, Betsy. She don't have far to, far to drive. Thank you, sir. When, you know, to come visit me. Oh, are you going to be in jail, sir? Well, you know, one thing leads to another. I figure, you know, I um, thank you, sir. On... Thank you, sir. Can I, you know, hey. Sir, what do you think about um, the state building the prison in um, your city here? Well, uh, yeah, I've heard a lot about that, and I uh, think it's a pretty good idea. I mean, we have a whole bunch of criminals here in Illinois, so, uh, you know, I figure, hey, you know, might as well use our city as the big gangbuster of them all. Thank you, sir. How do you think, what do you think about um, them building the uh, prison here in your city? That is the worst mistake this could ever... I'm totally against. I'm sorry. Those um, were their impressions on building the uh, prison. Back to you, Ed. Well, and now on to more serious news. A train carrying nuclear fuel went off its tracks, killing four and leaving countless others injured. And now our top story of the night. Reverend Billy Jackson, preacher or feature? Never rot. And Jesus said... Sexual sin is never right. Our bodies were not made for that. But for the Lord. And the Lord was wants us to fill our bodies with him. Praise the Lord. Well, that was you a year ago. And what's come, what's become of you since then? Well, I've lost a lot of money. Mm, my house. Anything valuable to me. For reasons we all know. I don't want to mention it again. It's been dragged through the mud enough. And um, I've just <coughs> going, been going down for so long. And for you people out there who want to help me preach the word, call this number, 550-1234, and help me get back on my feet again. Praise the Lord! Well, that was just two months ago, and since then, the Reverend has recovered all of his lost earnings and is back on track. And in other news, Libya's President Muammar Gaddafi issued a statement just earlier today that all American citizens in Libya to, were to be shot on sight. Less than a half an hour later, an F-16 stealth fighter flew over the Libyan capital and using laser-guided laser bombs destroyed the capital, killing all 112 members on it. The Libyan government is expected to withdraw its earlier statement sometime tomorrow. President Reagan today flew to Russia to continue talks with Prime Minister Gorbachev. They'll be discussing the possibility of getting rid of all the rest of the nuclear weapons. Now joining us via satellite from Russia is our own reporter, Jim Jansen. How are you, Jim? Thanks, Ed. Um, Gorbachev and Reagan are still in the meeting. Uh, okay, Jim, uh, any idea on how much longer they could be talking? I have no idea, Ed. They did have a break about a half hour ago, and I heard that they've gotten rid of already 250 thermonuclear weapons. Well, thank you, Jim. Uh, we'll be checking back with them at the 11 o'clock news for an update on that very critical story developing in Moscow. Next up on News Scope, a story about a newly found bird in New Zealand. It's up on News Scope. Oh. oh. I'm hungry. So am I. Me too. How about a snack? Okay. Pringles! Pringles. I've got the fever for the flavor of a Pringle. Well, there's been a newfound bird in New Zealand, and here's our own Sammy Lynn to tell us more about it. Sammy? Hi, Ed. I'm here in New Zealand, and this bird, they haven't thought of a name of it yet, is, um, he was found in the jungles of New Zealand. He eats eucalyptus and small rodents. 
He's believed to be a nice pet, but um, he's very friendly. <laughs> Back to you, Ed. And in other news, Bush has taken an even further lead in the political race. Jackson, his only opponent left, uh, is falling further behind at this particular point in time, as you can see behind me. Dukakis, who might have posed a threat, died earlier today because of head injuries sustained in a California earthquake. Uh, we'll have an update for you later on that earthquake. And on the lighter side of news, Joel Hamilton, a boy born with a mental disorder, is progressing very well. A program called Mickey is helping children like Joel. <laughs> Joel's mental disorder is his speech. Before the program, Joel could not speak at all. Now he can say Mickey and many other words, too. And in other news, today was a day to be marked on the calendar. Over 75 policemen, the SWAT team, and the Coast Guard took part in one of the most biggest drug busts ever. On Chicago's beachfront, boats with marijuana were stopped by the Coast Guard. When pulled over, they opened fire, killing five out of the six members. Believing that they were dead, the smugglers went on. The last remaining Coast Guard notified the police and ordered in the SWAT team. The smugglers arrived expecting nothing and were stopped by Chicago's finest. The craft company, which started off as a small industry, has since become a multi-million dollar deal for its owners and investors. The company plans to expand even further the beginning of next season. Yeah, we've been doing pretty good down here. All profits have been going up. Eat your cheese, it's good for you, and uh, we'll be expanding sometime, I don't know, maybe next year. The Olympics are the talk of everyone. The USA, taking over 150 gold medals at Calgary, is expecting to do even better at the Summer Olympics in Seoul. The U.S. swim team, led by Captain Jason Sapansky, who won three gold medals in the last Olympics, is also expected to do very well. Yes, the ice capades are back in town, brighter and better than ever, led by their new captain, Nell Carter, who, in the show, dresses up as Ronald McDonald. She says this new group of athletes is bigger and better than ever. That's right. Our show is bigger and better than ever. Uh, that's our slogan. Come down and see us. It's just a great show. You'll love it. I know it. The Ice Capades will be coming in town sometime next month. When we return, we'll have a look at a jail bay break in Peoria. For food and friends, join us at Tori's, a new restaurant on 41st in Maine. There is a jailbreak today in Peoria. The convicts, a family of monkeys, a 5'10 elephant, and two bears escaped from the Peoria City Zoo. It seems the cage cleaner was drunk at the time he was cleaning the cages. When he left the cages, he didn't lock them. When our people asked him about it, he said he didn't even remember going to work that morning. The elephants and bears had been detained, but the monkeys are still on the loose. If you've seen the monkeys, please contact the zoo. Travolsky, Fitzhammer, and John Keaton ducked out on the chess table today. They are playing right up to the late clock. John Keaton has only lost a few pawns, where the Russian, Russian has only a few left. It looks like the USA is going to win another world event. Yesterday, California suffered one of its most severe earthquakes in history. It measured 8.9 on the Richter scale, a point higher than the famous San Francisco earthquake. Here is Marlene Johnson with the victims and the damage. Thank you, Ed. I'm here at the Ritz Carlton in San Diego, and it seems like we've had quite an earthquake. Let's take a look inside. I'm here at the, in the lobby, and there's quite a bit of turmoil. And here's a victim. Let's see what he has to say. How are you doing, sir? Oh, I'm doing okay. Just a few scratches and bruises. My wife, she got hurt. The paramedics told me to stay away for them to come back. All the ambulances are full right now. Well, that's too bad. Um, there's a lot of, a lot of damage. You're gonna have to do a lot of cleanup. Back to you. A new building development in Western Decatur is attracting a lot of attention these days. An apartment in the new high rise is supposed to go for around two hundred thousand dollars, but most people say they're willing to pay. Well, I like the price. It's a very good price. I'm probably gonna buy one for my daughter and my son. My daughter just got married. Earlier today, gold was found in Bloomington. A middle-aged man was out gardening when he found a chest. When he opened the chest, he found gold and many other jewels inside of it. It is believed to be the lost treasure of Julius Felico. He says that the money hasn't changed him, but his friends say otherwise. The man who used to come and take my dog Barky for walks every morning, and then when he found the gold, the, my 
when Marky came over with the chain in his mouth for his morning walk, and the dog, and the meat owner kicked the dog in the side and said, get the hell out of here, doggy. And now Steve Willard's in with the weather. How you doing, Steve? Not too bad. And yourself? Pretty good. It's pretty cloudy outside. That it is, and it seems like it's just in Illinois that it's cloudy. Let's go to the Illinois. Springfield is experiencing heavy thunder showers. Champaign not as bad. Chicago's partly cloudy. Rock Island experiencing some snow flurries. Marion, we're keeping an eye on. Looks like there might be a, a formation of a tornado. Peoria, a tornado did touch down. We're gonna go to a live interview with Jack Coleman. Steve, I'm here at Peoria. As you can see, the weather is very bad. And um, there's a few houses knocked down. Not totally knocked down, but like cars have been thrown everywhere. It's very windy and cold here. Back to you. High winds in Nevada. It's thunder showers in Texas. High winds also at the bottom of Texas. Sunny and 92 in California, partly cloudy up in the eastern part of our nation. It's also had another heat wave in Florida. Back to you, Ed. When we return to New Scope, we'll have the sports with Mike Pinnipin. Welcome to Jim's Emporium. We have a wide selection of sporting goods. Punching bags, bikes, golf clubs, Racquetball, anyone? We've got racks for swim swimmers. We've got tennis balls for the tennis player. So come to gyms. Buy what you need. Thank you. Welcome back to New Scope, and now it's Sports with Mike Pinnipet. How you doing, Mike? Oh, pretty good. How about you, Ed? I'm okay. I heard that uh, the fighting line I won today. Oh, they had a great game. And in arena football, the Bruisers beat the Knights 69 to 46. In hockey, the Rangers scored one, Flyers zero. Sorry, Flyers. And the Islanders, they had a good day. Four to Capitals three, a very close game. Pat LaFontaine scored all four points for the Islanders. In basketball, an interesting day, Wildcats lost to Purdue 71 to 61. A line I massacred the Badgers. 87 to 64. Kenny Bale had a great day. In professional basketball, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was under a glass backboard when someone came up for the dunk and broke the glass. Now, unlike usually, it's supposed to break in little pieces. This one broke in big pieces. A piece hit Kareem in the middle of his head. He was rushed to the hospital and later died of this incident. Now let's go to our top 10 standings for the week. This down here. As you can see, Wisconsin had a good day, good week last year, last week. Wisconsin, though, is moving down. Illini moving up to first. Wisconsin down to third. Boilermakers up to second. And the Indiana Hoosiers down to fourth. Well, that's my standings for the week. And now, the newest sport to hit Illinois, Kadima. Mike Arcadia beat John Magruder. Here they are now. And here we are, Magruder playing against Arcadia. Neither of them having a real good day. Back to you, Mike. And in tennis, McEnroe was cheated by the judge. At the end of the game, McEnroe lost. A mob formed, hunted down the judge, and killed him. I guess they don't have much spirit. Brian Kelly won the Conn Smythe Award for the most outstanding person in the NHL. That's it for the sports. Now back to you, Ed. When we return in New Scope, we'll be talking with Dr. Art Uline on the recent uprising in the Met scandal. Hi, I'm Fabian, here at Flowers with Love. If you need any sort of arrangement, come on in. We've got lilies, all sorts of, all sorts of flowers. So when, remember, when you have a social engagement that you need to send flowers, remember Fabian at Flower to Flower. Thank you. Welcome back to New Scope, and I'm here with Dr. Art Uline, and we'll be discussing the recent uprising in the medical fraud. 
That's right, Ed. Many surgeons have been performing medical practices without a license or anything. Some people have been coming home with infections, internal bleeding. Some people have even died from this. We have a surgeon on tape. We walked into him, and of course, he has stopped us. Here he is now. Hey, what's, going what's going on in here? Hey, 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 hey. no pictures. No, no pictures. And if you don't have any medical fraud, please contact your local police. This has got to be stopped. Oh, thank you, doctor. You're welcome. And remember, for news you can use, watch Newscope weekdays at 5. That was a good movie. I've never seen that before. Oh, it's this. 
Oh, there's some numbers in my dad lobby. <laughs> we won't need them. <laughs> um, what do you want to do now? Um, well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to go with the uh, Monopoly board. Okay. Dumb questions are these. Just think of a good hey, one. Hey, I know. Want to come down here and visit us? No, what are you... Jeez! What are you oh doing? God. You're crazy! Come on. Osborne Green. What a spaz. It's not like he's really gonna come. A jerk goes, runs off. He's just a chicken. Oh, he's really gonna come after us now. He's coming in the house. I bet. Boy, what a jerk. God. That guy might really come. I should just kick him out. Come on, are you gonna sit in there all night? Oh, like he's really gonna come. Forget it, I'm getting something to drink. Can't believe he's hiding in there the whole time. Oh my god! Oh! Maybe it was a dream.
Hello, Dad. We have an emergency over here. Just, just come quick. I gotta go. Ryan Kelly, and this is the official 1988-89 Illini basketball video. Roll it, boys. Sunset tonight at 5.54, so you get a little time to still make it out to the beach there. Check that out tonight. Tonight's flow should be... Falcon 2-1, cleared for max takeoff. Time's done. Roger, here we go. Yeah. 
have plans for the night? I said, hopefully you things go well. I'll be... It's like Publix broth basted young turkey breast at just $1.49. Because I can be Oh, did you? Yeah. So that's a hundred dollar gift. So you know, don't feel bad about when he invites you over, like you're using him. Three-point shot hurts. 
Stephen Bardo just gets it up. 
and you watch the ball almost is on the other side of the backboard. And Nick Anderson is talking about from the outside three point across to Anderson. Here it is, Burton. Burton with that shot. Take a look at this. Explosion. He looks like a halfback. He's taking off. And here comes Battles. No way. He... Smith does. Feeds inside. And uh -oh. they're great jumpers. Remember the punches and stuff. And they're the shot. Rebound. Ball Smith on the run. Nice man. Battle. 
Especially when you threw it on the back of the rim like he did. Oh, so if Battle can just get it down, he gets in the final against Andre Wiley. Well, that's what I call it. Tap danced on a lot of guys' heads in the Big Ten this year. <laughs> and in the MAC conference, too, when he was at Northern Illinois. Right, right. Well, he literally, unfortunately, lost for a while. Let's see what the judges uh, have to say. I see one nine over there. You know what I hope is it's a sudden death. Five seconds to go. Come out later, weeknights at 7.30, starting September 11th. The following is a special presentation of ABC Sports. And a Ryan Kelly presentation. A year ago, quarterback Rodney Feet conducted the Southern California Football Symphony. This season, junior quarterback Pat O'Hara had the baton in hand. O'Hara had worked and waited in Pete's shadow for three seasons. But... In a preseason scrimmage in late August, O'Hara's knee was shattered. Severe injury, requiring a second round of surgery just yesterday. So, center stage stands a redshirt freshman for Southern California. Todd Marinovich has not played in the game since 1987, when he set national high school records as a quarterback. Highly talented, heavily recruited, much expected of him. But in his opening performance, he has to face one of college football's better defenses from Illinois, led by number 95, Mo Gertner, an all Big Ten tackle. And number 48, linebacker Derek Brownlow, who had 155 tackles last season. The quarterback for the Fighting Illini is Jeff George, also a highly touted, much more player coming out of high school, but he is now a tested junior. And tonight, he's got a problem with that Southern California defense, one that dominated the Pac-10 last season, including three All-Americans. Tonight, Illinois meets Southern California. Illinois started off with the ball after a kickoff, which left them about at their own 20-yard line. Uh, in the is the deep back, Griffin, up in front, George, drops straight back, holds it, unloads it, short, goes to Griffin, up in the backfield, he moves it in, and picks up the first down at the 35-yard line. After forcing the punt on their first chance with the ball, they got the ball back quite quickly after, uh, a USC punt. And this is their first play in their second possession. The assassin was not in there on the first series. Darren Boyer, number 26 now, is in the backfield for Illinois, replacing Toss. Jeff George sets up, spins around, plays outside work. Trying to get out there with a little one on one for Kelly. And senior wide up. And the first down. Quick release that he has. And to throw around the defensive end. Nobody was blocking him. George is 6'4", but very agile and a very quick release. Well, it's Sean Wax comes out now as they go double wide to the bottom of the picture. Wax is a seat to Bellamy out there. George hands it off instead. It goes to 26. Bellamy is going to the next one. And he crosses midfield to the 40. And Bellamy is now on the side of California. Trojan's out of the field. Bernie Bellamy. 
first down at the 47 before Spears marked out. And then this is the first catch made by Stevie Williams. First catch of the year. Inside the 42, Georgia picked up a close to five yards. Stevie! He throws it sidearm, but he does whip it. Just, he throws it quickly, and you're seeing a wide open line eye offense. The last two first downs have been passes. John Mekovic, as you take a look at Stephen Williams. Nine straight years, and Williams won anyway. After an Illinois fumble, USC got the ball back. Only to be slightly disappointed by this play. Then Illinois got the ball back and let Howard Griffin do some running. This next play was not an exceptionally spectastic one, um, but it proved to injure one of the other teammates for the other team. So we'll put it down here. Just let's see. Listen to the sound. Can you guess who got hit? I know who it is. Lady night, Pally. And here's a little fast fact for you. The Fighting Illini of Illinois have played USC ten times in their history, but have not beaten the Trojans since the first meeting in 1935 when they prevailed 19-0 to zero in Los Angeles. Could it be time for another upset? Let's watch the rest of the game. So this wimp's being carried off the field. And let's take a look at the play again. And you can take a listen to what happened. And there you heard the collision. Hartley weighs 265 and Spears weighs 190. Illinois was then forced to punt and put USC deep in their own territory. Wings for it, back at the Trojan 10. This is a good punt. High hanger. Oh, it takes it out of our bounce. It's going to go dead inside the five. He had a dandy seven yard. 47 yards and split it dead. USC was then forced to punt to the big guy, Stevie Williams. He got a good piece of that from all the way back to the 38 of Illinois. And this is Stevie Williams. And Stevie brings it back to the 50. After giving the ball up again, USC started and was quickly stopped. The tight end, he does not get the ball. Emmanuel gets the ball and the Illini get Emmanuel all the way back to the 15 yard line. And as Illinois got the ball back, let's take a timeout to chat with Stephen Williams' parents. Well, Keith, we talked about the great Williams tradition receiving down at the University of Illinois and with uh, Stephen's parents, Barbara and Oliver, they're from Los Angeles area, Hawthorne, California. You don't get too many opportunities to see your sons play. No, we don't. We're happy to be here today. We just hope we win. I talked to Stephen in the offseason, and the thing that impressed me, he carried his brother's football card, David, in his wallet. Well, that's one of his inspirations. Both of them, all of our brothers are his inspirations. What's the value to that keeps producing wide receivers as opposed to running back? Because back when I was a kid, that's what I was. Nice to see you both. You look great in your line, I tell George with a little flip outside, kind of a help me out of this situation pass, and it works a bit. USC then got the ball back. And we're up to their good old playing again. That's a coverage sack for Illinois. Now, With Illinois getting the ball back, this is a, a simple example of how stupid you can be if you play for the USC Trojans. 